Yeah, my name is Michael Flaherty. Um, I guess I am a Newfoundland artist. I live in Cornerbrook, and I work at uh, Renfold campus of Memorial University of Newfoundland. I did uh, the visual arts program in Stephenville, and uh, then I went on to NASCAD in Halifax and did a degree there. And I ended up in St. John's after that, and I worked at the Craft Council Clay Studio in St. John's for about three years, and then I did some traveling. I went and did a master's degree in Saskatchewan, also in ceramics, and uh, ended up back in Newfoundland again. It was never intentional to come back to Newfoundland. It's just that's sort of the way things played out. And uh, so I've been here for about four years. I guess I've ba basically been a professional artist for 10 years or so. And it's definitely location. I think that I've done more art in Newfoundland than I have anywhere else. Although I do travel quite a bit to do things. Um, recently though, I have been quite interested in Newfoundland being uh, a part of the content of my work as well. And um, currently I'm working on a series of um, sculptures that are antlers, caribou antlers made of porcelain. And uh, and it's so it's uh, you know informed by my ramblings in the woods and on beaches and uh, you know found objects and I'm also incorporating uh, you know pottery shards from beaches into these sculptures as well and yeah I've, I've just been more and more interested in Newfoundland as a theme uh, I've done two big trip art projects actually where I sort of combine elements of adventure with art making. And the first one was in 2007. I bicycled uh, from Vancouver back and forth through Canada and the United States uh, to St. John's. And I stopped at art galleries along the way and uh, did free bicycle repairs for anybody who wanted to bring in their bikes. So it was an interactive social art project with an environmental angle to it. Two years ago, I did. Uh, I lived for three months alone on the Gray Islands off the northern peninsula of Newfoundland. I was inspired by John Steffler's book, The Gray Islands, which I think is a brilliant piece of literature. It's, uh, it's amazing. And um, when I read that book, I knew I had to go there. So I came out with this art project that sort of uh, was a reenactment, basically, of the character in the book, uh, what he did. and. Um, you know, that book is full of ghost stories, but I don't think about the world in that sort of way. And, uh, and I was out there for a long time by myself. Uh, what I did was I brought <clears throat> um, 500 bricks to the island. And we brought them out, and there's a fisherman who brings people out, and he has a cabin there and stuff. And uh, we brought out the bricks and unloaded them onto his wharf, and then he just left, left me there. And I spent the next three, well, the next two months carrying these bricks across the bog and up over the cliffs and, you know, to a little valley that I found, a beautiful little idyllic valley, you know, three kilometers up over the island. And uh, I built a kiln there, but the kiln was built uh, inside out. So I kind of inverted the plans of the kiln and built it inside out so that in a conceptual sense, the entire island was inside the kiln. I wanted to do a piece where I could say that I created an entire landform or like an entire landscape um, or a, you know, a piece of earth in a conceptual sense. So it was sort of uh, conceptual art or earth art um, combined with ceramics, combined with uh, you know, a documentary experience of living there on this, in this place. It was, I, I have to say, I live very comfortably I slept in a tent every night, uh, and I had a you know a really nice camp made, and I had all those bricks there, so uh, I had a really nice fireplace when I wasn't building the kiln out of those things, and uh, I you know made a really nice oven. I made baked bread half a dozen times, and I uh, made jam every day, fresh jam out of berries, and uh, I ate really well out there. So it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't a survival thing. It was like, a, it was like turning the environment into, you know, 
my place or a uh, you know, comfortable place for me. And it's surprisingly easy to do.